as we know that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he mentioned in many ahadith and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala himself many times in the Quran he says Akimu Salah establish the prayer establish the prayer and he also given us the other matters with our life we have to earn obviously to feed our children we have to look after ourselves, our health so we can uh, carry on to fulfill our, fulfill our duties. So now our test is that while we are fulfilling our duties with our families or in this world are we fulfilling the haqoqullah as well or not the rights of Allah which is namaz which is prayer. Some people this time we see they are very punctual in their prayers in their religion but they are not good with their families. Sometimes we see the people they are very good they are giving everything to their children whatever, whatever they want and they are very good in relation with their families but they don't read namaz they don't read prayer. So we have to be moderate we have to fulfill the haqoqullah the right of Allah and we have to fulfill the haqoqul ibad the right of the humans. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not only he has given us the responsibilities of our families but he has given us the responsibilities of other people who are around us. Our neighbors in the Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that you should be benevolent, you should be respectful to, to, to your neighbors, you should be respectful to your friends, you should be respectful to the people who who works under you you should be the, you should respectful to the orphans of the society and first we see the people who are very good in their relations in the world but they don't come to the mosque they don't read the prayer that's why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he instructed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to emphasize on the first pillar of Islam. As we know the main central pillar of Islam is prayer. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, As-salatu imadu deen, man aqamaha aqamad deen, wa man tarakaha hadamad deen. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that the prayer is the central pillar of Islam. So whoever established the prayer, he established the deen. And who neglect the prayer, so he is undermining, he is undermining the building of the Islam. He is demolishing the building of Islam, the one who neglects the prayer. And this is our test. And the people who are good in, in, in prayer, in fasting, in worshipping, but we see they are not good with their families and with the world. That's why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Khairukum Khairukum Li Ahli The best of you, the one who are good with their families. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, he, he made a system that a man when he grow up, he became mature. A girl when she became mature and they reach to the certain age, they got married. Marriage is needed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says why what is the purpose of the marriage why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put this system he says wa min ayatihi an khalaqa lakum min anfusikum azwajan litaskunu ilayha wa ja'ala bainakum mawaddatan wa rahma Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this is also the sign of kudrat of Allah that he made your spouse from you human marry from humans so he made a spouse from from inside you so why this system Allah placed so you can get the player you can get the sukoon you can get the uh, tranquility from your spouse the wife she will have tranquility from the husband and the husband he will ha he will have the tranquility from the wife and Allah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he told us two conditions if you want to live with happy life with your wife, with your children, what is the rule for that? Allah says that we 
created you, we made your spouse from you, litaskunu ilaiha, so you can have tranquility with each other. So this is the gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as soon as we get married, so we get the sukun, we get the tranquility. But if you want to keep it last for a long time, that the first day when you got married, and you were in sukoon, you were in tra tranquility, but after 2 years, 3 years, 10 years, 20 years, the situation now is not the same as it was at the first night of the marriage, or first year of the marriage. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us two rules. He said, لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا The sukoon, the tranquility, this is the gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But then, if you keep it last, وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً so you should keep the mawadda, you should keep the mawadda. What is mawadda? Normally mawadda is translated to be the love. But mawadda, there is the difference between mawadda, wood and hub. Hub means general love. You, you, you could have the love for, for your property, your business, your children. So hub, hub is love, which is general love. But Mawadda, Allah said, if you keep that tranquility that you had at the first night of your marriage or the first year of marriage, if you keep it last, so you need to have Mawadda. What is Mawadda? Mawadda means unconditional love. So once you got married, then you have to love your wife unconditionally. Why? Because if the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Tun kahul mar ali arba'in, li maliha, wali hasabiha, wali jamaliha, wali diniha," that the woman, she is married for four reasons. Sometimes people they get married with the woman because she is beautiful. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Sometimes the people they get married with the women because she is from a, a very good lineage." Sometimes she is very wealthy and sometimes she is pious. So the Prophet wasallam said the first four bizatid deen that you have to give preference to the piety, to the pious woman. Why is it all the instruction we have in the Quran and in the hadith? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet wasallam, they want that our life would be very easy. Our life would be in peace. Because if we get married because the girl is beautiful, so she is not going to be beautiful for forever, after 10 years, 20 years. So if you got married with your wife because she was beautiful at that time, so when the beauty has gone, so your love has gone. If you got married because of wealth, so once wealth will not be last forever. So once wealth has gone, your love has gone. If you got married because Lihasabiha, because she was from very best lineage, so the, the the relatives they are not around all the time. And the Prophet said, give preference to the piety, to the pious women. Why? Because the piety it increases with the age and with the maturity. So that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he mentioned that if you want to keep that tranquility that you have in the first year of your marriage or the first day of your marriage, so you have to do, you have to love your wife unconditionally, mawadda. And the second condition is mawadda tawm wa rahma. What is rahma? Rahma is blessing. That obviously when we sit together, we live together, there would be some dispute, there would be maybe argument. But mawadda, sometimes you ignore, sometimes she ignores. So by this way, you could keep that tranquility in your whole life. The important thing is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has given us two kind of rights. So yes, we have to fulfill in our family and we have to fulfill the things which Allah has made obligatory upon us, which is salah, which is sayam, fasting, which is zakah which is Hajj. How, mashallah, good person is he who have a children, who has a money 
and he go for the Umrah and uh, he mashallah very good with their children their children they are very respectful all the things but alongside if he read five daily prayers if he gives zakah if he fast in Ramadan and he go for Umrah or Hajj mashallah nobody is like him because he got mashallah both blessings in his life but normally we see the people ignores they got everything but they don't read namaz some people they are very punctual in prayer but they are not good with their families so we have to look after both the things and the important thing is that sometime yes i have told you we have restrictions we have responsibilities we have to be uh, we will be answerable on the day of judgment for everything sometimes we think the muslims they are they have to do a lot of things they they have to read five daily prayers okay they are not allowed to touch the alcohol or a lot of things the other people the non-muslim they are free to do this but we are not but what allah says in the quran on the day of judgment when the non-muslim what would we say the first verse of the 14th para the non-Muslims, disbelievers, they will say on the day of judge, on the day of judgment, when they will see the Muslim, they are going to the paradise because they didn't do the things which they have done, and they didn't do because their God, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, He forbade for them. So they would say, "Rubama yawadul ladina kafaru, laukanu Muslimin." If they, they will wish if only we had been a Muslims we had been Muslims why they will say at least at least we will not go to the hellfire at forever if we had been a Muslim and other people Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about them when they will see the animals what would happen with the animals okay we will go to the jannah or hellfire so what would be happen with the animals so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he will raise the animals again with us and at the end if for example the animal they had a fight in this world so allah will raise them as well and allah gave the compensation the animals as well and then he will say kunu turaba that all the animals will turn into a dust so when the non-muslim the disbeliever they will see the animals now they turn into a dust so they will say ya laytani kuntu turaba if only we had been turned into the dust as well so we we should thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has prepared for us on the day of judgment the jannah 